Hey, so I'm really looking for a solution for my data center network. I mean, it's really going to be a pain to manage and, and particularly around the VXLAN side of things and, and keeping track of all the VTAPs, the VNIDs. I really need some sort of a platform or, or some sort of a system really to manage that. Well, have you considered Cisco ACI? Whoa, 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 whoa. We, we can't deploy a whole new network solution. Yeah, all right, I, I, I get it. Uh, but what you're really looking for is centralized management for your data center VXLAN, right? Yes, that's exactly what we need. All right, so let me show you Cisco's solution for a VXLAN environment with centralized policy-based management. Great, what's it called? Yeah, it's called Cisco ACI. So once you understand Cisco ACI, you find it's a really simple solution. Hi, I'm Rich, welcome to the Rich Tech Guy channel. And in this video, we're gonna dive into Cisco ACI. Now, this is actually gonna be the first part of a multi-part series of Cisco ACI. So go ahead and hit the like button if you like this content and hit that subscribe button so you can follow along as the other parts of this video get released. All right, so let's have an overview of Cisco ACI. Now, ACI is Cisco's solution to software-defined networking for the data center networking environment. Now, what's that mean? Well, I mean, back when I first heard it, it meant absolutely nothing to me. So this is essentially, in a nutshell, what software-defined networking does. When you have a traditional networking environment and you want to make a change to how something operates on your network, you have to identify the necessary devices and then you have to go to each of those devices and manually configure that change. This is a time-consuming process and it's also prone to errors. I mean, you, you miss a command or you incorrectly type a command and somehow the switch actually thinks it's another command and suddenly stuff breaks. It's no longer working for you. Now with software-defined networking, all you got to do is you make that change one time in the software-defined networking environment and then it pushes out the configuration change to the necessary devices. So what does Cisco ACI stand for? Well, I'm only gonna say this once, all right? Cisco ACI stands for Application Centric Infrastructure. And now that I've said it, I honestly, I want you to just forget about it, okay? ACI is, and what it stands for is really a horrible name for it in my own opinion. Uh, and it really provides no information as to the benefit that ACI brings to a data center network. Now, before we dive any deeper into ACI, I'm going to give you some prerequisite study material. If you notice from my intro skit, ACI and VXLAN actually go hand in hand with each other. So if you haven't seen my videos on VXLAN, I encourage you to go watch them right now. I'll link them down below. And also, I'll have the link to the very first one in the series up here. So the reason why ACI and VXLAN go hand in hand, well, the short answer really is that ACI is built on VXLAN. Now, the reason for this is VXLAN is a great solution for the data center. You, what you can do with VXLAN is you can uh, have multi-tenancy, you can link multiple sites across a WAN environment through VXLAN, and you can have end-to-end -end multi link redundancy in a VXLAN environment. Now, VXLAN, of course, is not without its drawbacks. So as your VXLAN infrastructure grows, you're gonna run into management challenges and keeping track of your, your VTAPs, your, your VNIDs, as your infrastructure grows bigger and bigger and you have more devices on it, that can grow to be more and more of a challenge. So Cisco has introduced ACI as a, man, as a way to manage that infrastructure in a centralized way. And in fact, the way I often refer to Cisco ACI is Cisco Enhanced VXLAN. There it is. That is the, uh, the easy way to think about Cisco ACI. And uh, essentially what that is, is if you have a VXLAN environment and you bolt on a centralized policy-based management, that's Cisco ACI. Now, while ACI does run essentially on VXLAN, there are some noticeable differences that you need to keep in mind. So when you're looking at a legacy or traditional VXLAN environment, it's based off of the IETF standard RFC 7348. 
And as a result of that, VXLAN does not run specifically on Cisco devices. It can run on any network device that supports that standard. ACI, on the other hand, is a Cisco proprietary solution. So it only runs on Cisco switches. And more specifically, it only runs on the Cisco Nexus 9300 or 9500 series switches. Now, ACI is set up in a spine leaf topology. And the way the switches operate in ACI is you have dedicated spine switches and dedicated leaf switches. And this is actually based off of the hardware run on the ACI uh, or on the Nexus switches. Also, these switches have to be dedicated to ACI mode as opposed to the traditional NXOS mode of the switches. Now, when you're looking at the Nexus 9000 line, the 9300s are generally going to be leaf switches. There are a couple of options for Nexus 9300 spine switches, which can be used in smaller ACI deployments. But uh, the general use of the spine switches in ACI for a larger deployment would be the Nexus 9500 switches. And those are only going to be spine switches. You cannot set up a Nexus 9500 as a leaf switch. Now, as we have that spine leaf topology, like in VXLAN, the thing that we need to keep in mind is there are some, some differences here. And for starters, the spine switches will only connect to leaf switches. There are going to be a few exceptions on this for extended ACI topologies, but as we're covering in this particular video the basic setup of Cisco ACI, the it, Basically, the spine switches will only connect to leaf switches. Now, the second rule that we need to be aware of is that the leaf switches do not connect to other leaf switches. They only connect to spine switches and the devices in your network. If you recall from my VXLAN Part 2 video, I had a virtual port channel or a VPC set up, which required a peer link between, the two, between two of the leaf switches. In ACI, you can do a virtual port channel, but the peer link connection actually goes through the spine connections. To create a system of policy-based management, it, what you need to add to this spine leaf topology is APIX. And the best practice is actually to VPC, virtual port channel them, to your leaf switches. ACI is going to require a minimum of three APIX and the number of APICs must always be odd. Now, this is kind of to resolve any policy disputes, uh, kind of like in Minority Report. So, ACI comes in two forms. There are physical APICs, which are built on the Cisco UCS C220 servers, and there are virtual APICs, which can deploy into a VM environment. The rule here is you need one physical APIC minimum and then any combination of physical or virtual APICs afterwards, keeping in mind you do need the odd number of APICs. Now, this is because when ACI is deployed, it's going to need that physical connection to build out the network, and I'll get to that in a minute. And then the virtual APICs can be added in once you've got some policy configured. So what happens if your APICs lose connectivity to the network or you lose the ability to access your APICs, your APICs go down, whatever? Well, the short answer is nothing. The network will continue to handle traffic based on the most recent policy set by the APICs. That policy cannot be changed until your APIC connectivity is restored, but APICs do not affect the data plane traffic, and so if you lose your APICs, your data will still cross the network as it was according to your most recent policy. Now, once we have our network set up and we've got the APICs in place and connected, and we start to turn it on, this is how the process is going to work. So the leaf switches are going to start looking for a connected APIC, and the way they're going to do that is through CDP. This is why we actually need at least one physical APIC in an ACI deployment. Once this connection is established, what's going to happen is the APIC will push necessary updates to the leaf 
and then it will push policy out to the leaf. Now, if this is a new deployment, there's not going to be much policy applied. After the leaf switches are set up, or at least one leaf switch is set up, you're going to have the spine switches, which are going to be reaching out. And when they have connectivity to the leaf, they will report to the APIC and receive updates and policy. Once the spines are set, they start looking for any leaves that have not been discovered out there and will facilitate the connectivity for those leaves to connect and, and reach the apex and get their updates and their policy application. And finally, once all the apex are able to communicate with each other, they will sync up and vote on any policy variations. This is why we need the odd number of apex. All right, so now that we've got a ACI network set up and it's all powered on and everything's synced up and policy's been pushed out, let's look at what's actually happening on the network. Now, when, a, when we're looking at a uh, VXLAN network traditionally, it's going to be running MPBGP. ACI, on the other hand, uses a different protocol set. And, you know, I often joke that this sounds like it came out of a Marvel movie, but it's actually a real protocol set run on ACI, and it's called the Council of Oracle Protocols, also known as COOP. And the way the Council of Oracle Protocols work is the spine switches are designated as the oracles. And when a leaf switch learns of a new endpoint, what it does is it sends that up to the spine switches as the saying, hey, I've got this endpoint here, it's attached to me. The spine switches then maintain their database of where all the endpoints are. So if a leaf switch needs to send traffic to an unknown endpoint, really all it does is it just sends it up to the spine switches and lets the, the spines sort it out. Now, does BGP play a role in ACI? It, actually, yes, it does. And the way BGP works in ACI is when you want to route externally. So if you're doing an external layer three connection, you are going to be attaching either a router or a layer three switch into your ACI environment. And the leaf switch connected to that is going to start receiving routes. So this is where you're gonna to wanna to have BGP or you can also set up OSPF inside of your ACI environment to begin to have the uh, to, or to receive that route information. Now, when you're looking at BGP in, with a ACI, you're going to configure that. You're going to define the autonomous system number for your ACI environment. And then you're going to set up your spine switches to be the root reflectors, which is just like in a traditional VXLAN environment. Now, in my next video, I'm going to go over the policy configuration that you do in ACI. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you'll be uh, able to see that one when it comes out. And also, if you like this content, go ahead and hit that like button. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here with keep learning, keep studying, keep improving. Thank you.